So hello everybody, welcome back to the Midlands Outdoors channel today. Back with another history video for you. In the part of the back country now, we're in Albury. Travelling all the way down, we're going to cover the street of the Titford Canal, which is right the way at the bottom. Goes all the way to Langley. You've got Langley Maltins, you've got the Albury Junction just down the bottom down there. I'll tell you a bit of history about Albury as well. But it is a lovely canal line. I've been down here before. And you've got the other side of the canal, which goes all the way to Tipton. Right the way to the bottom. I may cover that one in the future as well. We'll be back down here to cover that off. And we'll go and check out what's down that way. But it's going to be an interesting walk for you. And I know other people have requested me to do this one. Um, so I'm down here today. Just under the, the bridge, which goes up to the road, what goes into the Albury Town Centre, which is just right over there. So it's not too, too far. But quite nice, um, this canal line, how far it goes. I mean, you can just keep going straight. It'll take you to the Birmingham Canal Line. You go to Birmingham City Centre. I have done that one yesterday, actually. I walked um, a bit of it, and I actually done a bike ride last night. And I went all the way to the city centre by the mailbox, and I will be covering a video on that one as well, to do the special bike riding series with history and more. So stay tuned for that one. That'll be probably be next um, couple of months or so. But let's get down the canal line, and let's get to the Arbor Junction, where we will begin our history part to the video. So enjoy the cinematics, guys. Yeah, here we are. I've nearly made it to where the junction is now, where the motorway overpasses the canal line to Albury Junction. And then when you turn right, that will take you up to the Tipford Canal, which will keep on going, which is actually the route I'm going to be doing. But just before I do that though, I'm gonna go a bit straight foot forward, a bit down the canal line straight in front, and then we'll come back up on ourselves. And then we will go down to the Tipford Canal and keep going straight up. Nice little walk and it is a nice day actually. I mean the forecast rain to begin with and it all changed. And it's about above 20, so I'm taking my jacket off in a bit because I'm absolutely so warm. As you can see, it was a bit cooler this morning, but it's warm enough. But the bridge just in front, this is Stone Street Bridge. It was built in 2001. It's got the plaque and sign just right the way underneath it. But you can just see the life in the canal line down this section. Quite amazing actually see these all the lily pads starting to come up look beautiful imagine when those come into flower and the fish life down here it's quite cool i have seen um 
big fish obviously the carp down near the woods um i know many other people might have seen fish or the, to the surface down here but it's also another popular place for another hobby magnet fishing which is something else i do in another channel i've been down here before so many other people may have seen this place already on my, one of my videos but to come under the motorway now it is a bit of a change of scenery with a canal line having a canal under a motorway look look at that and it is really busy and noisy because the cars are traveling right around top just imagine especially this time in the morning it's rush hour traffic to get to work to obviously drop people to school as well so it's going to be really busy above there so i can't hear the cars at the moment but the bridge in front which i will quickly show you this is actually called aldbury junction bridge and that is actually what leads on to the tipford canal section which we will be passing in just a short while but let's go straight down and i will show you what's at the bottom of this canal section right the way down there where the, the little bridge is up it's quite dark so yeah you can just see Arbor Junction Bridge just a bit closer which is uh, the sign that's going all the way across I do know that this canal line going back many many years ago the motorway wouldn't have been here I have seen an old photo where this bridge is here and it's going all the way across over to the other side and there is a barge coming through here but you can just see how old this is all together though. I mean looking at the side bits of it you can see how rusty the metals are in there and some of the uh, stuff is actually coming apart look even if I touch it look you can see where it's cracked onto that corner in time that probably will keep getting worse and worse and it will need repairs to it but just imagine how old this bridge is all together though especially the motorway when this was uh, first ever built quite amazing we'll come back, back to all this a bit later on in the video but keep going straight down you've got the signs I will be covering a straight video as well in the future straight in front which is actually the Birmingham section of the canal line it goes seven miles and she's there Titford Pools Wolverhampton six and a half miles look at that and I would get a better view of it so you can see the sign a bit better look yeah that's where we're going to be going later is the tip for the pool just right the way down there let's go have a look at the bottom yeah i don't know whether many people can identify this for me or what this was for was there an old factory right the way over the other side now you can see there is a uh, bits here look there is old ladders leading right the way up it ends there and it goes to like a brick concrete wall just right there now the little bridge here have obviously extended somewhere there but you can just see look look at that if i look, have a look around the other side it is leading into something what may have used to have been there many many years ago possibly might have been a very old factory but if you can identify what that was for drop it in the comments would all be interesting to know if you know what this bridge is all about but there is something onto there which i have noticed um i uh, can't make out what it is uh shell uh i think that's that shelly on England, I don't quite know. Just make out the SH. Yeah, if I am right, then it possibly could be. But look how old it is underneath. I mean, the wood looks like still in good condition, but the beams, they're rusting it a little bit. Though. So, the thing is, what amazes me about going down canal lines is the wildlife, what you get. It is so beautiful to see the young birds at this time of year, like the geese, the ducks, when you have the little babies. Especially up by me now, Zoe, you had all the little little ducks, so it's a white one, which is beautiful to see, it had all its babies with it. But you can just see right now, we've got Canada goose. Loads of babies coming towards me. Look at all these. Oh, <laughs> I love them, I do. I used to keep geese, chickens and uh, ducks but they can be very vicious you can see there they're being protected look but look at those they've grown up so quick those have i do remember seeing those on the opposite side over there there's loads of them wow what a lovely sight for the day
yeah, I don't know where he'd be able to hear me. It is really busy under here because we've got two junction roads now. One right there, Manchester Street Bridge, which is just right on the side. And we've got Anchor Bridge, which was built in 1994. It's dating back a little bit, but you can just see the way they designed this one. A bit narrow underneath. And I know some of the bridges down the Black Country Canals are really old and they date to the 1800s, but look at this one. It is so narrow underneath. I mean, my head is nearly touching the ceiling. <laughs> I have been down very, very narrow ones before like this. They're really small. But look at that going right the way down. So yeah, onto this canal section now, which you can see. I believe it does pass by a depot, which I think it is actually DPD, which is right around the corner, I've been told, and it will lead you onto the Birmingham section of the canal line. Overlooking from the other side of Anchor Bridge, built in 1994, you can just see it is a lovely canal. And if you do want to see this one in a future video, hit the like and subscribe button, we'll get down there and get filming. But what we're going to do now is go to the bottom, back under the motorway, and let's tell you a bit of history about the Titford Canal and also a bit about Albury as well. So yeah, I don't know about to hear me, but I've come apart from the noise because you've got the noise of the motorway, which is right the way above. So it does say Old Albury, um, as old as the hills, was mentioned in the Doomsday Book uh, survey of 1086. Um, so it says there, it has since been a detached part of Worcestershire and since 1974, with the county of the West Midlands, the town uh, prospered in the Industrial Revolution and was eventually given a charter in 1935. However, it has since lost its autonomy and forms part of a larger Sandwell Council. And for those who can remember Albion in the 1970s, the changes in the town centre will make you weep. Many of the historic buildings have been demolished in the name of a supposed progress. The once impressive town square has been diluted with the that's a banal modernity of the extensive council offices and a large supermarket. The addition of an uh, Augie capped uh, tower and the latter fails to salvage the, a wretched uh, block on the landscape. The retail park next to the supermarket has ripped the commercial heart of the old town centre which has been left to decay. So it says uh, down to here as well, um, the books in the library were moved to the old courthouse in Church Street, a building erected in 1816 and used as a magistrate's court until recent years. The building was also a police station until the new proposed built station was constructed in the low town. So it says here as well, um, Church Street still has a few historic buildings. The oldest structure in the street are the offices known as the Big House, which is the date of 1705, above the doorway featuring a curly uh, pediment. However, it's still thought other parts of the fabric are even older. So, it's much history about Albury. I will drop a link in the description if you want to read all this. It's lots of interesting stuff. But I will tell you now a bit of information about Tipford Canal, which is the next section, which we're going to be going all the way down. So, let's have a look at this one. So the Tickford Canal is a narrow seven foot canal, a short branch of the Birmingham Canal Navigations in Albury, West Midlands, England. So I will post a photo on now. This is Tickford Top Lock, the pump house and the start of Tap Bank uh, branch. I will show you that later. And we've got Langley Morgans to cover the history of that later on as well. Post a photo before 2010, what this was actually like. It is abandoned and I know a few people actually been into there. So this was Langley Lawton's before the damage by fire. So authorised under the Birmingham Canal Act of 1768, which created the original Birmingham Canal. It was constructed in 1836 and 7 and opened on the 4th of November 1837. It now runs from Tipford Pool, a reservoir made in 1773 to 4, which now lies under and both sides of an elevated section of the M5 motorway near the motorway junction number 2 joined the BCN Old Line um, at Arbor Junction, which is where we are right now, also under the M5. Beyond Tipford Pool was a uh, continuation abandoned in 1954 as the portway branch which served coal mines in the Tipford Valley. Also from Tipford Pool was the Causeway Green Branch, opened in 1858 and abandoned in parts in 1954 and September 1960. I will 
show you a bit of the um, old rail line which actually goes down the bottom and is abandoned. Um, we will cover a bit of history down there a bit later. So I mean tip for pool, that's quite interesting down the bottom as well. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go that far today, I don't quite know. But it says there at a height above sea level of 511 foot, Titford Pool was one of the original water sources for the James Brindy 491 foot specific summit level of his Birmingham Canal, later called the Old Main Line. Titford Pool is also the highest uh, navigable canal in the Midlands, with only Rochdale Canal beating it at 600 feet above sea level. The feeder was not made navigable until 1837 with the addition of six uh, locks uh, nicknamed the Crow which uh, they were a gent to chemical works owned by Jim Crow. These locks as usually on the BCM have single lower gates to reduce leakage. So the Titford uh, locks also known as Albury locks became derelict and restored in 1973-4. So yeah quite interesting that is a bit of interesting information about Titford, Albury and all the sections just down to here. So what we're going to be doing now is going over the Albury Junction Bridge, going up by the, the locks just right out there and then keep going straight on. We'll have a look at that pump house when we get further down as well. It's going to be quite interesting just to show you that one. But there is the train um, line section. If I can get into there to show you where the old tracks are, you're going to enjoy that one. So let's keep going and enjoy a bit of cinematics for you. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed a bit of that cinematics. We're approaching Tap Bank Bridge, which is just another lock section right the way here. Wow, didn't expect this uh, lock to be this low. That is really, really low, that is. I don't know if it's still, um, the barge is still come down, because I know how the lock system works. It flows up, then it flows down to make the barge come into the next section. But over the other side, I do remember that actually being really, really full and covering up to there. But wow, you can just see the other bank. There's loads of interesting stuff just lurking above that uh, mud just right at the bottom. You can see old bottles and um, a few other little things. Wow. I have done a bit of um, a thing called mud larking before, and that would be quite ideal for that actually. Uh, going across and looking to see what's buried within there. I know quite a lot of people do it down the Thames in London, but. I have done it locally to be on the river and I found some really interesting stuff. It's some really surprises you. But looking over there though, there is pipe work sticking out, bits and pieces off cars. So you can understand that when magnet fishing, if you're, if you're into that kind of thing, I have done this bit here. You may have seen it on my channel. Poured some little things out. You can just see there's loads of metals into there, look. Wow. Yeah, nice to see that really though, actually can't see the fish life in there over there but yeah this is Tap Bank Bridge as you can just see the one that we come under to another flight of locks which is going right the way up and it should bring us out by that pump house which is just right around the corner so I mean as you can see with this section of the canal line you could see back in the old days I mean and even today industrial uh, stuff is always by the side of the canals you see this one here so we've got some buildings over there look we just imagine there would have been like coal mines and stuff going because we're in the black country now loads of coal mines give us imagine the smoke it would have been quite immense back in them days but 
I can to the pump house just right the way there. And I first ever come down, I've never been down this section of the canal line. And I said to Jules, I said to her, what's that building in front? Is that part of an old mine? Because it does look like an old engine house when I first ever looked at it. And I realised it's an old pump house, which was there many years ago for this canal line. And it's still there today. So I'll have a look at that. But we've got something interesting coming up right onto the corner now, which I'm going to quickly show you. A train line, which ran all the way through here and it's now derelict. So yeah, I might as well tell you some information before we get into there. Now, this is actually known as the Aldby Branch Railway. So this was a short branch line which ran from Langley Green on the Birmingham to Worcester via the Kidderminster line. Uh, so to the town of Aldby, it also served Aldby Division of the Manufacturing Company, Albright uh, and uh, Wilson. It was owned and operated by the Great Western Railway so there is a picture here for you right now of the Branch Rail Bridge over the Titford Canal, we might see that a bit later. Um, so it opened, um, it says there, the Dudley and Arby Junction Railway was incorporated on the 21st of July 1873 for a line uh, from Langley Green, Dudley to Halsey. There were also to be two branches. The company entered into a working agreement with the Great Western Railway, GWR, in 1876 and on the 11th of August 8, 1881, the name was altered to the Albury Railway. The line was opened for the goods in 1884 and passengers the following year. So you just imagine this line, and I have covered information before of the Howell's Owen section, which ran all the way to the top of Romsley across the, the viaduct, which was there many, many years ago, Dalry Dale Viaduct. But it's quite interesting to see all this information about rail lines and i am really fascinated with them and i'm trying to read the information uh how's owen street there was also goods uh, yard on an embankment via bridge on seven stars road a short distance north of the station so it closed yeah the station at albury had a very short lifespan closing in 1916 as a result of the first world war and never reopened Although the line remained in use for goods traffic to the local factories until 1960s, when the section from Albright and Wilson Albury Division to the site uh, of Albury was severed by the building of the M5 motorway. This meant the stop north had to be closed, but the section near Langley Green remained open for freight traffic until the 1980s, when the entire line was put out of use and is now abandoned so we will quickly show you what the line is like today it is really overgrown this line as we can see there is an entrance way to go right the way into it but i might take the back way to go into there because there is like a little path leading up to it yeah this is it i've always wanted to come down here to see this and i've seen people do it uh, I know one person who I've been watching, he's fantastic, um, Geo Wiz, he done a, a mission across the black country, if many of you have heard of that one, and he went across the um, a bit of the old line to travel, it's quite interesting, go and check that out, it's really fascinating to see that one, it's interesting how he done it as well, but this is actually part of the branch, which you can see, oh, get up here, I don't know where I'd be able to see the line, oh, we might be able to, like this is leading right the way onto it. She wears the rail track. I'm sure I've seen the rail track um, not long ago. But you can just see, look at that. Ah, here's the rail track. We've still got some remaining pieces. But a good example um, of the rail line, which you can just see right the way there, covered up by all this plant. Really fascinating to see. Leads all the way to the bottom, keeps going and going. But there, would have been gated off many years ago actually. But you can see there, I don't know what all this is about here. We've got a brick wall. But look at that. Nice example of train line. And just imagine, similar to the Alzo in her section of the line, up Romsley. This would have been how big the train track would have been altogether. But you can just see there. Interesting to see this. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the little history. And also showing you this like, little train line section. Yeah, that's quite interesting actually. I mean, you could walk all that, but I need the right gear on to do it. It'll probably take you over some interesting parts. But we cut to number two lock, which is actually leading into Ending Street Bridge. Oh wow, look at that. 
that is absolutely amazing to see that wow a very very old building i do know the open is at certain times of the day at certain times of the year i believe um jules has been and it's been open but look at the architecture of it though i mean the brickwork and how old that is possibly dating back it's coming around the front of it just up to here oh it is so warm there's benches other little parts as well just onto that corner it is locked i believe but we could have got over to there and got across but you can just see the side of it look possibly would have been some extensions to it because i can see some metal sticking right the way of the side look but wow might have to come back and see when this is actually open some point and get onto the land around the side so quite interesting So it does say here actually, um, where is this actually? Tiffa Pump House, now home to the Birmingham Canal Navigation Society, built in the 1850s and originally housing a beam engine. A second uh, was added a decade later. These were the later replaced by an electric pump. Its function, which is still performs today, is to move water from the bottom lock flight to the top, as the locks have a tendency to leak water. Is that why actually that? down the bottom is actually really really uh, shallow and it has something to do with this and this actually helps it a little bit possibly may do but it says there so the short pounds are very quickly empty this is a quick and convenient way ensuring there's plenty of water in the flight for navigation so i reckon i'll probably be doing stuff with that to ensure these still happen down there that is quite interesting actually uh, but we've got by the side of here as well a tarmac company didn't know this was actually here then so you can see they do all, all sorts here probably where most of the tarmac comes from from this like, little area but, yeah one more view from there look it's nice to see the uh, the architecture of the windows as well it does remind me of a pump house for a coal mine and that is actually why i thought it from this angle when i come down but look at that really interesting So yeah, we come up to the last section now for the Langley section, which is where we're going to be ending our video, just by the Langley Maltins, which is right there at the bottom. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Quite a bit of a noise coming from the uh, tarmac company. You see, there's quite some old stuff over there in there. Look, look at these things. Quite a lot of work going on. But Langley Maltins, though, is really fascinating and interesting because it's still abandoned but the land around it is actually still used um, you can't get in it no more you used to be able to get into Langley Mortons I was too late on this one um, I would have gone in there and had a look at it to cover some history for you but before 2010 I don't know if you've heard of a site called 28 Days Later Urban Exploration it was posted on there and then all of a sudden it was sat on fire and there is one building into there which is still in mint condition but you can't get inside it even though you was able to get into Langley Mortons you wasn't able to get inside it because it was blocked up and I know by the main road where you look into the factory where it was there was entrances to go in many years ago but because this company who owns the side of the land for it I don't know whether they own the whole of the Langley Mortons there used to be entrances around that section where their stuff is but because their stuff is now is placed there you can't go in there now because it's private property so it's kind of ruined it in certain ways and um, there wasn't easy access to get to Langley Mortons by across this bridge right the way at the top as well but it's a shame I've completely missed out on this one for you but you know at least we can see the outside of it but I don't know though I would love to see what's actually into there altogether you can see i bet you'd have to climb up there get on top of that that is actually the old rail line but that is actually going into their land so it's not worth you know trespassing and breaking laws just to go and have a look at it but look how old the bridge is this is actually the bridge what i was mentioning earlier where the train line would have gone all the way across but look at that we'll show you from the other side look there's no names on it but look how old it is well, there is actually, um, can you actually get up to here? I don't know if you possibly can. I'll have a quick look, I might be able to. 
you will see. I bet it's blocked up there on the corner. Oh wow, look at this. So it is leading us onto the bridge. What's in the middle of this? Yep, yeah, I was right, there's the uh, the train line which is running right by the side, look. But, it's walking down, somebody's made a path. Quite cool, see how far this really goes. But look at Langley Maltins, look at this. You can just get a nice view from there half the buildings itself. Now, you can get a good example where the fire actually started. Now, where I'm pointing right there, there is a building that looks charcoal right at the top there. It's got bits and pieces sticking up. I believe the fire really badly sat out in that building. But I'm going to place a couple of photos on for you now so you can see what Langley Mortons was actually like when it was in mink condition one more time. And if you look at the photo now, compare it to the photo from there to the buildings now, you can just see how different it is. You've still got bits and pieces which are still there, like the architecture of various things sticking up. And over there as well, onto that corner. Wow. It is really interesting. I'm going to go to the bottom just to show you the side of it. But it's a real shame you can't get into there now. Because the entrance to get into Langley was on this site, which is now a lobby place. You could just literally walk right into it. Uh, completely missed out. But you can just see it's really bad. I don't know whether I would go in there though, to be fair, because you can just see the decay. Apart from the one building, which is in mint condition, which I will show you, it's bad, really bad. But what a lovely sight of a devil. So here's the important key parts to Langley Mortons, which I wanted to tell you about. So Langley Mortons is a former Mortons in Albury, West Midlands, England, built in 1898. Um, since there, it was operation until 2006. It was damaged by fire in 2009, so like I mentioned before, 2010, burnt. Um, but I do know it was on 28 days later, post in 2010. Um, but it was before that, and it was in really, really good condition. Um, looking down, um, so this is a photo view from the road in 2018. You can see it's in much good condition, but it is slightly to decay a little bit from the roof. Um, it is at the status of a Grade 2 listed building, um, opened in 1898, closed in 2006, that's why it was really mid back then. Um, the, the history, Langley Mortons, um, says they're replacing the Mortals destroyed by fire. The previous year it was designed by Arthur Kinder and some. It supplied malt to the Crosswells Brewery, a short distance away across a rail line. The brewery, established in 1870 by Walter Shower, uh, distributed Shower's ales throughout the Midlands. So there we go, ales, which, I mentioned, which was on about something like a brew there. Um, since there, the Mortons was known as uh, Shower's Mortons. The building next to the Tipford Canal, grain was delivered by the canal and later by rail. A railway started built from the main line, now the Birmingham to Worcester by Kidderminster line. So it's quite good we stand on right on top of it now, which is actually still here. You can just imagine what went on back on these rail lines, it's really fascinating. Um, so it says there, after the Second World War, grain was delivered by road. And there was some rebuilding following a fire in 1925. How many fires did this place actually have? Considering there's one recently, and then one in 1925. Uh, in 1944, the Mortons was brought from Shawls by Wolverhampton and Dudley Breweries. By the end of the 20th century, it was one of the few such buildings in the country using traditional floor Morton process. Morton came to an end in 2006 and following the year, Wolverhampton and Dudley Breweries sold the building. On the 8th of September, it's coming into it now, uh, 2009, the building uh, was damaged by arson so you just imagine how it was actually placed before 2009 on the 28 days later like, urban exploration people must have seen it and local kids and they thought oh we'll go and check it out sat fire to it because it is the story of most abandoned buildings across the basically across the uk the, the start from the the first process of becoming abandoned being found youtube sometimes people can find the location it spreads and it gets a word and that's when arson starts to take form. So you can just imagine all that there. But 
I mean there, in 2012, permission to demolish two of the three structures as part of an housing plan was refused by the Sandwell Council. The council reported noted that English Heritage uh, disagreeing with the report by structural engineers supporting the demolition said that despite some unstable masonry, repairing the building would be relatively straightforward. And nothing's ever happened with it though, that's what I don't get. You can just imagine with Langley Mortons that this could have been restored, it could be used for some other factory today. I mean, now it's just becoming beyond repair because the rain, all the weather conditions is destroying the building, it's making it collapse. But yeah, it's just really fascinating to see the history of this place. But its future is just definitely unknown and uncertain to whether it's all going to collapse and be left just to ruins like, you know, not like much is today, like how there and Abbey's a ruin and not much has happened with that actually. But looking one more time from this section by the rail line is really interesting. So yeah, this is it, Langley Mortons, which you can see right now. The old buildings. Look at them though. I mean, the top of it is so, so bad. It's right out there. And you see some of the windows are out. We've still got some windows into it. But I think it was all this bit what burnt. I don't know if it's actually the top floors because that's why this is actually collapsed. Uh, the two floors into there are actually in really good condition, same with the last building. But that building there, you can't actually get into that one. There's no access into it. But you can just see from an angle here, the back there, that is really badly decayed. But I can see machinery from where the grain would have travelled across on a conveyor belt just right at the top up there. It's quite high up actually, that is. But I would love to see what's actually into there. But looking at this one, this is actually where there's like a little footbridge which goes across into the next section and leads into there but that looks in really good condition I can just see about into the windows just about with a bit of light going in just into that one there see some uh, steel columns there's about three there would have been multiple floors there might have been a crane what lifted stuff out of water taking it up into that window there that's why the window is quite big been bricked up yeah, most of the windows here have been bricked up as well. Probably when the, um, back in the days when the canal wasn't used to transport goods, the thought we'll brick it all up and just keep the windows out of the am right now. But yeah, that's Langley Mortons, guys. Uh, it's still abandoned in parts, but land is used all around the perimeters of it and in the middle. But if you do want to go and check out a Morton building, oh, Go and check out um, Tewkesbury, um, the mill down Tewkesbury. I, I've got into that one. It is accessible, I think, still. Um, I don't know if you can still get into it from the road, but it is bigger than this. And the floors in there, it is immense. There is machinery, there is all sorts. Tewkesbury flour mill, that's the one that I really love. But, you know, breweries are different. Um, I would love to see what would have been into there. Wow, the, that machinery looks pretty cool, the back. But yeah so i think that's about it for the video today i uh, know it's um just a bit to come to this section what i want, really wanted to show you we are going to be continuing our journey down the birmingham canal line in the future in future videos but from me today the middens outdoors i really hope you've enjoyed a bit of history a bit of a walk and yeah something different for a change actually uh, i'm going to cover it more into the black country going to get out there to more places but one more view for you for the Langley Mortons, which you can see. Beautiful um, architecture around the back. And with the things on top of the roofs as well. But look how old it is altogether. But yeah, see you soon. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And like the video if you can, please. It shows how much support you are doing for these videos. And to help produce these videos, actually. I enjoy taking my time out for everybody to show this kind of history stuff and you know tell history of places which you know are still here today like this one so yeah see you soon and take care everybody enjoy the rest of the cinematics what i've got for you mm -hmm.